Why, hello, Tube. Today we have Epicurious, The Art of Happiness. In a beautiful Penguin Classic Edition. Let me just look at that beautiful Penguin Classic Edition. This is pretty much how it came. Um, it uh, Penguin Classic, really, you really need to step up your game because Oxfords tend to be much cheaper. And they don't look like they've been read 3,000 times before they arrive at your doorstep. Step up the game. But if you'd like to get your own copy, I have an affiliate link down below to bookshop.org where you too can buy a, a battered new copy for $15, $16. It's actually came from Amazon, so I don't know if bookshop.org's <coughs> book uh, will look any better or not. But um, it can't look any worse. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. Penguin really needs to go back to uh, their old way of doing things because this these new, these newer, um, it doesn't matter. We're not here to talk about Penguin. Epicurus, uh, born 341 BC in Samos, Greece, died 270 um, BC, Athens, Greece. By the way, if you are a student or someone that's working on some sort of a project and you're looking for um, information, this is not the place to be. I am not going to help you. If you're a student, you're going to fail. If you if you use anything that I say, I guarantee you that. Um, so just sit back, uh, enjoy watching me make a fool of myself, or don't. And uh, yeah, I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Um, so Epicurus, I, it took me some time to read this. It took me maybe two false starts and finally I broke down and read the introduction, which I really hate doing. Um, mostly because, um, I want to try to go into things with my own opinion and my own understanding. Um, but you know, whether I'm right or wrong or whatever. However, um, that first letter, the letter to Herodotus is so dry, so dry. And he's talking about atoms and, and like sciencey stuff that look, I am not an expert at all when it comes to science. I am very much, um, illiterate when it comes to science so i have no idea if he was really on to anything or not in his um sciencey talk i do find it incredibly interesting though that in you know 300 bc um they're aware of atoms and that um basically everything is made up by itty bitty tiny particles that you know prevent um that are kind of working together to create what you see and what you don't see and everything. But you also see that too in um in um like Buddhist texts. Um they also thousands of years ago um had the idea of atoms and things. So I think that's really interesting that um these people who you know basically just coming up with this hypothesis that's um even to this day sounds outlandish if you didn't know that you know for a fact that these things exist um it's just kind of amazing that they, they came up with those things back then um and i really wonder how how and maybe he maybe he says how in this but so in the introduction um who did the translation the trans Translator mentions that uh, George K. Strodach, S T R O D A C H, mentions that Epicurus kind of um, had a very dry way of writing, and he did that kind of on purpose, and that our lovely translator to stay um, uh, to stay. Um, as close to the original as possible or whatever um he also kept it really dry I, on purpose and 
I mean, okay. I mean, that's how Epicurious wants it, right? But my God doesn't make for a terrible reading experience. However, we, we get to the last set of letters. Um, letters to uh, Minosius. M-E-N-O... Uh, uh, M-E-N-O-E-C-E-U-S. I'm butchering these names. I know it. I'm sorry. A good YouTuber would know how to pronounce these names. I'm not a good YouTuber. Um, that's kind of where the money was for this book. What I was really hoping to get out of it was his kind of idea of philosophy more than his idea of science. And although um, what I read and what I understood of it, I don't. It, it's such a sad way of living <laughs> that I don't want to believe it. Um, essentially, you know, you live and you die. And once you die, it that's just it. Like, there is no soul. There's no afterlife. Once, you, once your body dies, your soul dies. And, you know, everything becomes nothing. And um, that's just... Such a terrible way of living. Like, don't you want to at least have hope that there's something? Of course, when it comes to the afterlife and death and all this stuff, nobody knows. And the people that tell you that they know are lying to you because they don't know. Because no one, you know, you have people with their near-death experiences and stuff or, you know, for that might be dead for a couple minutes and come back and they're telling you all these stories and stuff. But unless somebody's been dead for like a year and comes back and tells you this, okay, this is what happened for the last year. You're, I mean, I, I don't know. I just have, I have a hard time. I like to read things about, you know, about that sort of a thing, you know, about death and afterlife and what could be, um, what, you know, where do we go? And that sort of thing. Um, I also wonder where the hell we came from. Like that's one thing that you never hear really people contemplate. You know, like, oh, well, there's life after death, and there's no life after death. What happened before we were born? Where were where were we? Where where where? It's not just about about our death, but there's billions and billions and billions of years that happened before I popped on this planet. We, we don't we don't wonder about that yeah you know, i don't know it, it's such a it's such an interesting and something you could probably really go crazy over if if you just jump down that rabbit hole and get submerged in the and in, in the thinkings and stuff but um one of the cool things i thought and i think he must have had some either he, he himself or maybe somebody else, um, part of his group or somebody he knew must have kind of went, um, I think had some communication with somebody from the East, you know, India or whatever, or, you know, the, the Hindu Buddhist areas of, of the world, because, you know, he talks about, um, ataraxia, which to me sounds a lot like enlightenment. And essentially you kind of get that way by, just being good and um, essentially, you know, if you be good, you don't cause any extra pain on yourself and, you know, eventually you kind of become enlightened or whatever through it. And, um, you know, there's he has some very Buddhist thoughts on things like that where, you know, you can only control what you can control, right? You know, you can't, why are you worrying about things you can't control, the things that, you know we all worry about it. and it, it's not like something you can just like oh oh yep no longer worrying about that no longer worrying about that huge medical bill or or you know my car breaking down or whatever i just i just flipped the switch so you know it's a lot easier said than done um for most people and you know the the way that we live these days does, you know, life was a hell of a lot simpler back then. They didn't have YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or or any, anything like that. So, um, you know, <laughs> you know, kids 
kids this morning were uh, complaining that they were bored and they have a room full of toys and tablets and and everything else but uh you know you know you just get overstimulated and if you're not overstimulated 24 7 then you're bored so yeah i don't know where i'm going to go with this i'm tired I think we've done enough with this video because it's been 10 minutes. I've said absolutely nothing about anything. I hope that if you're um, interested in Epicurious, um, you know, it's so dry. It's very, very dry. However, I really like that letter to Minosius. Um, I don't think it's worth a $17 um, lightly blemished new paperback. Um, but if you can find it, I'm sure there's got to be online translations for free. I would assume at least uh, on Gutenberg um, or one of those sites has to have, you know, free translations. Or learn Greek and read it yourself. I, I assume he wrote in Greek. I don't know. He was Greek, but maybe he wrote in Latin or, or what. I don't know. But... Um, yeah, it definitely gave me some stuff to think about, even though a lot of it wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. But, I mean, I'm glad I stuck with it. I'm glad I, I did finally finish it. And um, I encourage you to check out Epicurious. If not, um, at least check out his, uh, like, I'm sure there's a website out there that has some of his, like, more uh, famous quotes or something. Just check him out, see what he's about. Um I wouldn't, I don't know if he's necessarily essential reading for anybody, but um, I don't think you're going to be any worse off by reading them. So that's it for this one. Peace. Let me know down below. Have you read any Epicurus? I think this is all of it. Like there, he was a prolific writer, but there isn't much um, that remains of his besides fragments of things. So I believe this little and. Let me tell you, the introduction goes all the way to the introduction and some um, some stuff from Lu Lucretius um, goes all the way to page ninety. So the the Epicurus stuff starts at page ninety and it ends on page seventy two. So we're going eighty two pages, and it's not exactly the tiniest of fonts. So um, yeah, it's. That might be it for Epicurus. It's kind of sad. Somebody that's so prolific and, you know, that's all we got of them. So, anyway, that's it for this one piece for the third time. Cheers.